Hello my soccer universe. Yes, I look different. I got under the weed wacker, but we're not talking about that. Uh, I actually made already this video, but on my phone I was driving the car and then I realized it's a time-lapse video. Great thinking on my part, so yeah, we're back with the normal background. And I'm back with a hockey shirt, because it got really cold today. So, I want to talk about the Europa League draw. I was watching it live as it was happening, but of course I was not in a situation where I could make it a live reaction video, which I would have loved to do. But those the times of these have never never at a time where I could actually do that. So I'm gonna give you my thoughts now. The most interesting part of course is uh, there was only one restriction on a draw. It was a free draw, which I'm not so sure this was is the best idea already. I think for a quarterfinal I'm fine, but I think for the round of 16 you still could make some sort of a seeding system. Um, I think a draw overall worked okay, but I think a seeding system might have done a little bit better. But then, of course, I'm saying this because... I mean, I, will, I said it, I want Napoli to win this one. And uh, for Austria, I want Salzburg to go as far as possible. And yeah, um, need, one of those is not going to happen uh, because of the draw. Um, I really thought it could have been better if there's some seeding now happening and then we would get a bit more even draw. Although the draw overall is quite even. So, what was the rule? No Ukrainian, no Russian team can play. So I really liked how they managed to do that. You had one pot with only Dynamo Kiev in there. And you had a second pot where all the other teams, except the two Russian teams, were in there, which were in a third kind of little pot. So what they did is, we had the pot with Dynamo Kiev. We take another ball of that pot, pull it in the, with Dynamo Kiev, sweep it up so that we still can ensure that there is a random Ness, who will have the first home uh, game. And the first team drawn, therefore, was Chelsea against Dynamo Kiev. Um, and yeah, that sounds like a very, very interesting matchup, to be honest. Uh, Chelsea, Dynamo Kiev. Uh, Dynamo Kiev is a big name in Eastern Europe for sure and has some pedigree in European competition. Of course, Chelsea is Chelsea at the moment. And we don't know where they are. If I look at the bookies, they have uh, Chelsea advancing with about 80% uh, chance. Although, I don't think it's that clear, uh, especially the way it's going. Uh, of course, we don't know if Sarri will be, if, uh, if there will be a new coach or anything like that. So, uh, will be interesting for sure what's going to happen. Then the next team drawn was already one of those where I think no one has them like top level uh, favorites. The big favorite actually before the draw were Chelsea and Napoli, both uh, around 450 chance of uh, winning it all. Um, but Frankfurt came out and they got a wonderful draw with Inter. This is a mat this is one of the two matchups that I'm really looking forward to. Frankfurt can give anyone trouble, real trouble, I would say. Uh, and Inter is a team that has a big name, but I'm not 100% sure how well they will do against Frankfurt. Frankfurt can give them serious trouble. Uh, I would expect that in the return leg at the San Siro, there will be many Frankfurt fans. I, I would imagine uh, the Milan side will be full with Frankfurt fans, which is fitting. I mean, it's red and black, uh, the colors of that as well, uh, of Frankfurt. So yeah. That's a great matchup. Absolutely love, love it. And um, while the bookies give Inter about a 73% chance of advancing, I think this is much closer. And I actually want to call this one that Frankfurt will. I think Frankfurt can oust Inter. They are really playing great. I, it's not that they are unfallible, but they are playing great. The next draw was Zagreb against Benfica. Um, I see this only going Benfica's way. Benfica did not uh, convince yesterday, but I think Benfica is a really, really solid team. One that is built to go a little bit deeper. I think a semi-final with a uh, good draw or so even without, I think Benfica has the potential to make it to the semi-final and the bookies give them even 77% um, chance of advancing. So, I mean, that's pretty huge. Uh, I would even pull it higher. Zagreb had had a great season, but I would say Benfica is a much, much stronger team. And then probably the glamour matchup uh, between two teams that are 
almost evenly matched not quite uh to be fair it's not uh that they're super even super super evenly matched but there is a clear favorite and this is the second most level um draw uh tie and the two teams in there i think both can go far i'm talking of course napoli against salzburg uh as i said before i want napoli to, go f uh, to win it all and salzburg to go far now this is not possible but i'm really looking forward to this one this could be a very interesting one the bookies have napoli at only around 60 60 to 70 percent uh, the, uh no matter how you go and that this was a tough draw for them before the draw was made, Napoli had a 450 um, odds of winning it all, and now it's 550. They're not co-favorites anymore. So Salzburg, I think, could give them real trouble. The way that they're playing, they're a solid team. Uh, I've seen them now many, many times. Salzburg is one of those teams that can give anyone in this field trouble. They will not win it all, but they can go. Uh, they could go far. I would still say Napoli wins this one, but it will be by a hair. Uh, notably, the second game is in Salzburg, where Salzburg is pretty much almost unbeatable. The next tie uh, has similar odds as the Inter Frankfurt uh, one, Valencia Krasnodar. Um, if Valencia is in normal form and they convert, I think it, uh, this will go like uh, Valencia will be the favorite. Uh, again, around 73% favorites. Uh, but Krasnodar convinced me yesterday. They really played well. So I, I think that could be a tight one. Sevilla Slavia is one of the most lopsided ones. There's only one that's more lopsided. Uh, and the chances of Sevilla advances are slightly below 80%. Um, Sevilla is one of those teams. If they make a quarterfinal or uh, semifinal, I, I wouldn't bet it against them. Uh, I've seen Sevilla winning too often this competition and I can see them winning this one again. Uh, it will be very interesting. Despite them having some shakeup in the league, uh, this is their competition. So I think Sevilla likes the chances and you know, any Spanish team is always a threat to win it all. Um, I think that's the only one. Any, take any Spanish team and you would say that they win it. And the two English teams that are left, Chelsea and Arsenal, they are not as convincing. I mean, Valencia is not convincing. Sevilla is not convincing. But La Liga is the best league in the world. Uh, speaking of Arsenal, they are the most, uh, the highest favorite. About 85% against Rennes. And I don't quite see it. Rennes just ousted Betis. Rennes is one of those teams that really can give Arsenal trouble. I'll be curious to see that one. They actually switched um, the home field. Uh potentially to not have two London teams play at the same day. Uh, therefore, Chelsea will have first game at home. Um, I think it's advantage Rennes in that uh, scenario. I The way Rennes played yesterday against Betis and the way Arsenal is... You don't know quite what you have with Arsenal. Uh, they're neither fish nor meat, we would say in Austria. Um, Fish, nicht fish, nicht fleisch. You don't know what you get from our, our, our Arsenal. I mean, they just made it barely against Batte. Um, I'm calling the upset. I think Ren will do that one. I think Ren has a real chance. So that's uh, my second upset that I'm calling. And then uh, the last one is Zenit against Villarreal. That's the most evenly matched um, one with Zenit 45, uh, only 45% and we have 55% advancing. Um, honestly, I would even favor Zenit in that one, despite the Russian League not no being there. But Villarreal has been unbeaten so far in the Europa League, but they're just not that good. And I think uh, if Zenit, yeah, on the other side, Zenit didn't play well against Fenerbahce in the first game. That's probably, I would, I, would, I would agree that this is the most even one, but uh, it's definitely not the glamour match. It's probably the least glamorous matchup of the, of the eight. Yeah. Because the only one that I, I'm looking at, the only other two that, yeah, there are three more that are not as glamorous. Zagreb against Benfica, but you have Benfica, that's a huge name. You have Valencia Krasnodar, there's Valencia in there. That, that's a bigger name than any of those two. And same thing for Sevilla Slavia. So yeah, I think this is the least glamorous one, but it's a tight one. Um, I want to call it for Zenit. 
So I'm calling three upsets uh, there, but we'll see. Let me know what you think, who will advance, what you think about the draw in general. I really wish that Napoli was not playing Salzburg. That was kind of the... If you ask me ahead, this was probably the worst possible draw. That's the one that I didn't want to have. But it's a very intriguing match, and one that I'm looking forward to. Um, if you ask me, yes, I would like that Salzburg makes points for Austria, but I'm for Napoli. Absolutely. Um, it was already hard enough. I mean, yes, yes, I guess they wanted Salzburg to uh, advance uh, because they really can. They are making points, and we we'll probably have another Champions League spot, which is great for the Austrian league. Um, but for me, it gets really hard to cheer for them. I honestly, I want Napoli to win this one. Uh, so we'll see. So again, the teams that I think... Chelsea, Frankfurt, Benfica, Napoli, Valencia, Sevilla, Rennes and Zenit. And I know I'm taking a risk on Rennes, but I really liked how, how, how they played. Again. Let me know who you think will advance, uh, give it thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon, bye!